This is Henry Frederick of Headline Surfer, and I'm here uh, again in uh, Oak Hill, Oak Hill City Commission Chambers with uh, Adam Warren, uh, our second candidate of the evening for Circuit 7, Group 20. Correct. Uh, Adam, you have a, a, a candidate, Warren, Adam, what would you prefer? Adam. Okay. You can never call a judge by the first name in the court, that's a no-no, but, um, you know, uh, I figure this is people's court, so to speak. Um, you names very familiar. Well, yeah, Adam Warren, um, Station Warren, County Judge. Your dad, Dan Warren. Let's talk about him. Um, is there any pressure to have to succeed, like a family lineage, or is that something that makes you excited to want to continue that heritage? Or because your dad was very prominent, and uh, especially the civil rights era, launching with Martin Luther King. Up in St. Augustine, do you know what, he segregated beaches up there? Yes, when he was state attorney in the 1960s, he integrated the beaches in St. Augustine. In fact, he wrote a book, If It Takes All Summer, and he describes his experiences as, as the state attorney during that time and talks about how, how he met with Dr. King and had Dr. King testify in the grand jury. Um, I always was very curious about what Dr. King testified about in that grand jury, but under Florida law, grand jury proceedings are secret, and therefore he was unable to tell me. But it's kind of funny because, uh, well, grand jury proceedings are a secret. Your dad, uh, Dan Warren, and I believe it was 1960 or 62 or 63, was uh, the state attorney. He actually prosecuted a, a gentleman that became very famous. John Tanner. That's right. In a hazing incident where the lifeguard recruits and the man drowned. Unfortunate tragedy. And um, he handled it pretty appropriately. But it's amazing how things like that just sort of pop up 30, 40 years later. He also prosecuted the Klan for engaging in racially motivated violence. And when the racist sheriff suggested that he take the back door to the courthouse, he said it'd be a cold day in hell before I take the back entrance in the courthouse. And that was my dad. Well, one he thing was I, not afraid of anything. One of the first people I met when I, when I uh, moved here to Central Florida to work at the newspaper uh, back in the mid-90s, I met Dan Warren. And he was kind of an exurbic, gritty guy. And I remember him telling me about the Speedway, those SOBs, they think they're going to get this for nothing. And he actually challenged them on like a hundred year lease that was like peanuts. And of course today everything's worked out pretty good. I mean, they tour the International Speedway. I don't know if they're any more famous here than the beach itself. Um, did your father could talk about that? And well, I was pretty young at the time. Right. And at that point, uh, I, I had no interest in politics. I just liked hearing the stories, but I didn't, I, I, I really wasn't following things at that point in time. But my dad would pick me up and uh, when I was in, living in St. Augustine and we would go to the civil rights, um, uh, the forward luncheon every year. In fact, my mom and I still go and they opened up the Civil Rights Museum in St. Augustine earlier this year, which was very exciting because in high school they did not teach us about St. Augustine during the Civil Rights Movement. And I didn't know that it was the most violent city in the South. I just, uh, I just, I, I think we need to talk about it more. Well, earlier I had the pleasure of speaking with uh, one of your uh, fellow opponents, candidates, uh, Steve Beale Rush. And we, we talked a little bit about the territorial aspects of when you're a county judge, you're in the land, or in Smyrna, or Daytona. When you're a circuit judge, you're in uh, four counties, in Volusia, Flagler, and St. John's, uh, anywhere from St. Augustine to Palatka, to Deltona, to Port Orange. Your mom ran uh, two years ago, I believe, the state attorney gave up her county judgeship, uh, retired, and then ran for That's right. She won Volusia County. That's right. But didn't do as well in the Allard counties. Uh, when a candidate, De La Roche, and I were talking, he was telling me about how he has to go to certain territorial things and kind of balance it all out. With your name recognition of your dad um, and your mom, how do you get your name out beyond them with such a vast territory in such a short period of time? You, you go to every event that you possibly can where there's going to be voters 
and you take every opportunity to speak <laughs> to the media like today. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak oh, here today. Oh, it's all a pleasure. It, it means a lot to us because unfortunately, judicial races don't get much attention and they are important races because you're more likely to see a judge than any other elected official. Did you see me on TV during the Zimmerman trial? I was waving to you. Uh, it's crazy. Um, I was locked up at the, at the fifth DCA at the time, so. Um, in closing, um, the primary is August 26th. August 26th. And there are three candidates. And in, in this race, there's three candidates. And in order to win it outright in the primary, you have to win 50% plus one vote. 50% plus one overall. Is that feasible when you have three candidates in the fourth county area? It's been done, but it's unlikely. Although it's possible, it has been done before, but it doesn't occur frequently. You kind of feel like, we talked earlier with Mr. Kennedy Roche, he was explaining about Canon 7, and I'm familiar with it, and it's not an everyday label. There are certain things you can talk about, certain things you can't, you know, because it could potentially hurt your credibility if you're on the bench. When you go to these chicken dinner events, and I know I've been to enough of them myself, you're kind of like a politician, right? In many ways, we are. However, in many ways, we are, I feel like we're bound and gag because under Canon 7, we can't tell you a lot of things um, that other people can. Um, there's also a lot of other things we can't do. For instance, we can't ask personally for contributions. We have to ask um, committees of responsible people to do that. And as you know, um, it takes money to communicate with voters. So in many ways, the rules that are imposed go against the whole, how it's supposed to occur in, in the typical sense. Can, ju can judicial candidates, especially the circle level, can they get packs and, and big companies, or are they pretty much? They can get, as long as the candidate does not inject partisan politics into the race, it is permissible to accept PAC contributions. Well, before we get into all that dry stuff, we're going to end it there. Um, and uh, I, I hope to uh, have the pleasure of speaking with you and the other candidates in this race. Uh, it's going to move a lot faster than people think. Uh, for Adam Warren, Circuit 7, Group 20. Uh, this is Henry Frederick of Headline Surfer, and thank you and good luck with your race. Thank you so much.